Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. One of the most common questions I get all the time through Instagram, through here on comments, everywhere. How can I improve faster? I want to improve faster. How can I be my own coach? My teacher doesn't give me corrections, so how can I still improve? On and on and on. So I am going to give you a little bit of a blueprint today. I am going to give you the formula, tricks that I use to self-improve. Because remember, I am not in a company and I don't have a personal coach. I do all of my dancing, all of my rehearsing on my own. And I have found some techniques that have allowed me to be my own coach. And I want to share those with you guys today. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about. The, the thing I want to disclaim, <laughs> disclaimer on this, I'm going to give you the tools I'm gonna give you the blueprint. I'm gonna sit here and literally give you everything you need, but you're gonna to have to do the work. This is up to you. This is not up to me. So this is gonna take you to do this work. Now, step one, you, you've you already pushed play. You showed up, you're here. That's the first thing is just to, to push play. And really the big step one, dancers, is to put your ego aside. Much, much easier said than done. <laughs> for example, um, for me, when I edit a bar, when I edit a rehearsal footage, when I do whatever, it's really hard to not be like, oh, I'm terrible. You know what I mean? You have to kind of put your ego aside and know when you're doing this process, you're doing it to improve. You're doing it for the reality check. You're going, okay, what is really happening? Let's fix it. You can't succeed and you can't improve with your ego either protecting you or being like, you're amazing, everything's wonderful, or you're the worst dancer ever. It happens both ways, honestly. So step one is put your ego aside. You're doing this process to improve. You are doing this process to push yourself forward. So that's like the main thing. You've got to just sort of go, okay, I'm doing this to get better. Ego, step aside. So something that really helps me that I do all the time, which is why I post footage, which is me through YouTube videos, you have to film yourself. Have to, must. You can't possibly see what's happening in a pirouette, what's happening in a da da da, in the mirror. It doesn't work. You're gonna get a very skewed vision of yourself from the mirror. Also remember, we never actually see ourselves in the mirror how we are in real life, it's flipped. So the mirror is a very skewed vision of yourself. So the first thing you're gonna do, whether you have to, we wanna work on a specific step, whether you're trying to improve a variation you have to do for an audition or for a competition, no matter what it is you're trying to improve, film yourself. Set it up. I will say the most accurate angle people say with photos and everything is shoulder level. Down, you look a little taller, taller, you look, a little, you know what I mean? Like you can skew things, but if you want an accurate picture of how you are in life, film it at shoulder level. So if you're working on the pirouette, if you're working on the variation, film yourself. Is it fun? No. Will you watch it back and think you're horrible? Yes. <laughs> That's where we go back to step one. Put your ego aside. Oftentimes, dancers, I'll be honest with you, something feels bad and you watch it on film and you're like, oh, Okay, it's not as bad. So it kind of can work both ways. Now, professional dancers often swear by never watching themselves. I don't watch any performances. I don't know. And there is something to that if you were at the professional level, if this is what you do for your job, if a performance felt amazing, don't watch it because you might be like, oh, it felt better than it looked. <laughs> you know what I mean? But at a certain point, unless you're like on the top, you've made it, whatever, I find it very beneficial to watch yourself on film because you don't know what it looks like based on the mirror and your own eyes need to see what something looks like because often dancers, that'll fix your problem right then and there. You'll watch yourself doing a turn and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I'm dipping on my left side, fixed. Whereas if a teacher says, pull up your right side, da 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 da, sometimes some other person's words doesn't register until you see it. Dance is a visual art form. Many, many dancers are visual learners, so you have to see it. So put the ego aside, film yourself. Now, a little bonus tip. If you're working on one specific step, this doesn't really work if you're doing a variation, but let's say you want to improve your pirouettes and they're just not going well. You know that little slow-mo thing on your phone? Film yourself in slow motion. Again, is it depressing? Yup. Yeah. <laughs> but is it useful? 
Yes, because again, in real time, it's hard to see what's happening in a turn. Oftentimes when I do my video coaching, which I'll link below if you if you've ever had a video coaching pass from me and you send me a video and I send it back with tips, I will slow mo it for you and take you through it and be like, look, do you see where your right shoulder is up in your arabesque, which in real time you might not see, but in slow mo, you will. So if you can film it in slow motion, another thing to do um, is most computers have like a, some sort of free editing software that's already built in that you can literally just slow down any video or you can do it on an app. So you can film the video and then slow it down and you'll be able to pinpoint what's wrong. So the next step is once you have videoed yourself, whether it being a step, whether it being a variation or not, sit down and watch it, put the ego aside and start looking at, all right, you know how it feels personally, but now that you're watching it, are you noticing things? What are you doing with your shoulders? What are you doing with your alignment? In a turn, are you falling off? Are you this, are you that? You can take notes. I would write them down, honestly. Again, if you're doing the correction thing, correction book, write them down. Oh, I really am dipping to my right side. I'm telling you, you guys, it's going to be revealing, especially if you do film it in slow motion. So take stock, look, know that no dancer on the planet is 100% perfect. We all have things we wanna work on. We all have things we wanna improve. And use this as a tool. Don't view it as self-criticism, use it as a tool. What do you see? How are your arms? How are your legs? How's your takeoff and your landing? Dancers, a big thing I see in technique class when I'm teaching personally is not the step itself, but the before and the after. How do you take off? How do you land? How do you come down off point? I've said this before, oftentimes we're fine getting up, it's getting down, that's the problem. So make a note, not just of the step, but your entry and your exit of it. How are you landing the turn? I see so many dancers fine in the pirouette and fall back on the landing. We've talked about that before, front on your landing. So make notes of the before, the step, and the after. Same thing if you're looking at yourself in a variation. If you filmed your solo, how do you walk on stage? How do you get off stage? What are your transitions in between steps? Certain transitions activate certain muscles. If you're not activating those certain muscles, they're not ready for a certain step. So that's incredibly important. So step four, once you've done this, do it again and refilm yourself. And if you want to, you can look at before and after, and you can pretty much keep filming yourself until you're happy. Look at it again, so go through the same process. All right, refilm the turn. Okay, did you fix what you did or are you still a little bit to the left? Maybe you need to be even more to the right. Because again, feeling and, and feeling the step and seeing the step, they have to go together. So even if you feel you're, okay, I'm a little more to the right this time, but it might still not be enough. So you have to marry the two. So keep filming yourself and taking notes until you see results, until you're happy. Dancers, a great thing to do if you've got to do a bar audition. This is going to take some time, but it's worth it. Do a practice run. You know that term called rehearsal? You've heard that term. Yeah, do a rehearsal run. Doesn't have to be fancy. Film yourself on your phone of the bar you're going to submit, all the combinations. Once again, I've told you all, if you are confused or I don't know, I can't come up with a combination, use any of mine. I don't care. They're here for you. They're here as a resource. But then go back and look at that video. Okay, here's what I want to submit. What can I fix? Again, you have to put your ego aside. It's not going to be fun to watch. I hate watching myself do bar <laughs> when I do my bars. But let me tell you, I've been able to fix some technique things editing my own bar videos because how it feels is not necessarily all how it looks but in both ways sometimes it looks better than it feels and sometimes it feels better than it looks but having taking yourself out of it and watching yourself is such a valuable tool and it's not hard we all have smartphones now you don't even have to make this glamorous literally take a, a video on your phone that's all you have to do and so with your audition, with your bar that you're submitting, do a practice run. I'm telling you dancers, if it's a place you really wanna get into, if it's an audition you really wanna be accepted to wherever, put in the effort, do, do, the, do the practice run. Because first impressions are everything. 
and you want to be really confident in the video you send. So do film bar on your phone. You'll be able to see, ooh, things you can fix. And if you are able to kind of put that ego aside, I'm telling you, you're going to improve tenfold. So film yourself till you're happy. And then what I would do is write down, okay, this is what I really need to remember and just keep focusing on it. I'm really dipping to my right on my pirouette. My hip is not whatever. Do you know what I mean? There's so many different things that you yourself can see that might just click for you. And then you can start focusing on it in class. But so many dancers don't want to film themselves and they don't want to like look at bad, you know, they're like, oh, I'm going to be look bad. You've got to get past that because you are the only one who can improve yourself. Even if your teacher is giving you corrections, they can give you corrections till they're blue in the face. You have to apply it. And if a correction is not making sense, this is another way to kind of be like, oh, I get it now. And maybe you just have to reframe it. So filming yourself, especially with the technology we have nowadays, is so valuable. So start doing that. Same with your variation. Film it. Don't judge it. See where you are. Make your changes. And you can be your own coach. Because guess what, dancers? Whether or not you think so, we all know what ballet should look like. You all know, even if you're a young student, you know what turned in is. You know what unpointed feet are. You know, oh gosh, I'm dipping to my left side. Like, you'll know. You don't have to be a ballet expert to know these sort of things. So you'll be able to see them on yourself and you are going to improve tenfold. And this is sort of what I will do with my students. Um, you know, it's as a teacher, you kind of have to give the same correction 14 different ways for students to sort of hope they get one of them. Lengthen, lengthen your waist, lengthen both sides, lift your heart, be taller. It's all saying the same thing. It really is. It's just how you phrase it. And sometimes you have to see it on yourself for it to click. And if you put the ego aside and do the work, you're going to improve. There's no way you can't. There's no way you can't. So I hope this was helpful. As a reminder, we are doing our first in-person Catherine Morgan and Friends event in Connecticut this January. I will include, include the link below to sign up. I would love to meet you all in person. It's going to be an amazing weekend. We're going to have so much fun. It's going to be super joyful. No judgments, y'all. We're going to do all the things, and it's just going to be amazing. So I hope you will join us link in the description box. If you missed the video on my dancer must-haves, it's right there. You can click it to watch. Love you all so very much, and I'll see you next time.